What's up everybody, my name is Itzel Linares and today we will dive into Sir John Everett Millay's painting Ophelia. But before I even show you the painting, let me give you a short introduction on our dude Millay and his painting of course. So who was this Sir John Everett Millay guy? Well, he was one of the three founding members of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, in short PRB. The Pre-Raphaelites were a rebellious group that fought against Raphael's style of painting, in which the Royal Academy enforced. The group focused on naturalistic paintings that were inspired by nature, religion, or literature, such as Shakespeare, but I'll get more in depth on who were the Pre-Raphaelites later in the video. Given that many of Millet's artworks were inspired by Shakespeare, he decided to portray Ophelia's last moments between life and death as she drowns in the brook. Ophelia is the character from Shakespeare's play, Hamlet. In specifics, Millet chose Act 4, Scene 7, where Gertrude describes the death of Ophelia after she had gone mad. In short, her lover Hamlet killed her father, which caused Ophelia to lose her mentality, stability, and died. And FYI, Millay took two years to finish this painting, from 1851 to 1852. It's oil paint on canvas and it's a 30 by 44 inch. If you ever want to see it in person, it is being displayed at Tate Britain in room 1840. So what are we seeing? Upon looking at Millay's artwork, you will see a woman in her mid or late 20s floating horizontally in water. The woman has light brown hair, blue-green eyes, pale skin, and rosy lips. She has her eyes and mouth half opened, and her glance is directed towards the sky but not looking at anything. Her hands are open outwards and she has no muscle tension. She's wearing a necklace made out of violets and she's also wearing a white silver dress embroidered with many complex designs. The lower part of the dress is spread out which makes her float. By her right hand and going down her dress, she has different types of flowers. Some of these flowers are daisies, red poppies, forget-me-nots, violets, and so on. Given that she's in water, She's in a creek in the middle of a forest surrounded by nature. The water is dark with some moss towards the bottom of the painting. Towards the top, there's a tilted willow tree and a lot of plants. The plants include meadowsweet, purple loose trees, and rosa rubicinosa. We can tell about this artwork is that it's representation of art. It's representational art because what we see in the painting sticks true to nature. So when we see the plant in a painting and a plant outside our house, they look alike. When our dude Malay was creating his artwork, he chose to put emphasis on Ophelia, making her the focal point, aka the important one that craves attention. Also, Malay chose nature to be the accents, aka the I'm not so eye-catching but I'm still important. Throughout the painting, we have line and shape. The lines are organic and they're everywhere. Lines in the trees, lines in the plants, lines in her body. Oh, and there's also implied line with the willow tree, um, the way it bends. It directs us towards Ophelia. Also, Ophelia's stare towards the sky makes us look that way. This is wondering, what she looking at? As for shape, they're irregular because we don't see triangles and hexagons, right? You have shape, you have shape, everything has shape. The texture in the painting is visual slash simulated. We can see it, but we can't touch it. The patterns are all natural, such as the repeated leaves in the bush. And as for space, the positive space is Ophelia and the plants, and the negative space is the water and dark background. The colors that Malay chose were mainly secondary and tertiary, which were all from the local color palette because leaves are green and not purple. Now that we know what the painting looks like, let's see what was behind the brush. So Millet was a super talented guy. He was so great that he got into the Royal Academy at the age of 11, which was the youngest. The Royal Academy is a school of arts in which they followed Raphael. Raphael was a master of the Renaissance 
in which his paintings served as a guide slash set of rules, which also meant that everybody had the same style. Through the academy, Millet met Dante Carrel Rossetti and William Holman Hunt. Together, they founded the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. The Pre-Raphaelite name comes from the painter Raffaello Sansino D'Arabino, aka Raphael. Their purpose was to do paintings before Raphael, hence the Pre-Raphaelite. They wanted to be as natural as possible and wanted to get away from the pyramid structure and idealization that Raphael had created. This also meant that their paintings were seen as rebellious. Together, they created many well-known paintings such as Christ in the House of His Parents by Millet, Isabella Millet, The Awakening Conscience by Hunt, Lady Lilith by Rossetti, The Girlhood of Mary Virgin also by Rossetti, and many more. So we know that the title of the artwork is Ophelia, which is a character in the Shakespearean play Hamlet. In the play, Ophelia and Hamlet are in love with each other, but their love couldn't be possible because her father wouldn't allow it. Until one day, Polonius, which is Ophelia's dad, he wanted to see for himself Hamlet actually declaring his love for her, but that meant that he had to spy on them, and it also meant that Ophelia had to lie to him. When that day came, Ophelia told Hamlet that his father wasn't around, but Hamlet caught on to the lie and she, he couldn't trust her. So he said loud and clear that there wouldn't be a marriage, which it broke Ophelia's heart. Later on in the play, Hamlet actually killed Ophelia's dad, which completely broke Ophelia's mentality. From then on, she wouldn't stop singing songs of death and of maidens getting raped. Until one day, she was picking flowers and fell into the creek, but instead of actually coming out, she just let herself die. What's interesting about this is that her death wasn't an actual scene. It was only a description by Hamlet's mother because she was the one there at that moment. And it's also interesting that Millet was the first one to actually portray a scene about which is now the painting of her dying because before there were only paintings of her picking the flowers painting is actually a two-part process the first part was the landscape which he did in Hogsmill River in Ewell Surrey there he encountered a lot of trouble because since he was painting directly from nature nature itself got in his way geese would come in just stare at him from the point that he was actually trying to paint the wind the weather everything affected the painting but it still came out good and then the second part that he did was Ophelia which she he used the model and he painted her in this in his own studio in Gower Street what's interesting about the model um, is that when he was painting her he she was in the tub and the tub, the water wasn't hot, so they would use candles in the bottom so it would heat the water. But one time, Millet didn't notice that the candles went out, so she was there freezing and she caught like a severe cold. Which, of course, um, the model's dad, like parents, wanted to sue him, but Millet just, you know, chose to pay all the medical expenses. Now, to put the information together, I believe that Ophelia represents womanhood in the Victorian era. I say that because in the 19th century, there was a great difference between being a man and a woman. A man's duty was to work long hours, be strong, and express their sexual desires. A woman had to have piety, purity, submissiveness, and domesticity. In this era, there was a great amount of sexual restraint, which led to the fascination of the woman and affairs. The Victorian society knew that such acts would take place outside and even inside their house, but nobody would t talk about it. The woman would stay with her husband, not saying anything because it would create a scandal. Ophelia represents womanhood because men thrived for her beauty and weakness. Ophelia was perfect to represent woman because her life revolved around men. Men were the reason she was alive. 
So when her lover and father left, she was left with nothing. She was nothing. As a woman, she wasn't strong enough to keep herself composed. So as a result of her weakness, she lost her mentality and committed suicide. She didn't have the strength to keep on living. We can also compare Malay's painting to Kurtzen's picture of modern Ophelia. We can see that she is in a suburban home and everything was left how it was. We can interpret that she committed suicide because she left her slippers and towel in the stairs, so she made the decision to get in the water herself. Like Ophelia, she also has the same stare, slowly slipping away. And the thing is with this picture is that she is behind doors instead of like Ophelia, that she's out in nature. But they're both in secluded places so nobody is around to see what's behind their mask. These two paintings are so similar because they both represent the woman and how their mental stability was driven insane until they committed suicide. Both artists wanted to show what was behind doors, behind the mask. Millet chose the pre-Raphaelite brotherhood style so society could see that yes, this is going on and we should do something about it and not hide it. This is my artwork and I have titled it Bloom. I got inspired by Millet because he created Ophelia to show the world how women were portrayed in the Victorian era. So I wanted to show how I see women today. I used the pink base, rocks, yarn, foam head, jewel stickers, tissue paper, fake roses, and an eyelash. I made Miss Bloom look like a queen because even if she's wearing pink and looks fragile, they still know how to be composed and be badass. I chose a tall base so we can have our head held up high, even carry heavy burdens inside of us, hence the rocks inside the base. Moving up, I cut out some old CDs and placed them as a choker and, a, and in a livery style of crown. It represents the things that try to suffocate us and prevent us from talking. So we take those things slash people and make them into our source of power because no one will stop us from speaking our mind. I chose to place a pink rose on the eye and white roses in the hair so it could symbolize growth because we never stop hustling. As for the pretty colors and jewels, it's to just say that we slay. To put it all together, even though we have white hair, roses, curly stuff, it doesn't mean we are your typical fragile domestic woman. Because we will fight and stand for what we believe in. We are strong and we shouldn't be overestimated. Now, I'll leave you with some pictures of the Women's March in Washington DC as an example.